Stoner, Marquez, Hayden, Rainey, Rossi, Agostini, Dohan, Lorenzo, Roberts, Halewood. What sets MotoGP champions apart from other racers? Here are 7 things MotoGP champions have in common. Number 7. Fast when it matters. There have been many riders throughout MotoGP history that have shown great potential during training, qualifying, and during short moments of glory during the races. What sets the champions apart from the rest is that they are able to be fast when it really matters. Valentino Rossi has for the most part been really mediocre at qualifying, but when race time comes around, he has been able to bring out magical speed that was not there before. Remember for instance when he went from 11th on the grid to winning at Assen in 2007, against a Casey Stoner that led for most of the race. Or Marquez win starting from pit lane in the 2014 German race. Or for instance the fact that Nicky Hayden won the 2006 championship only starting from pole position once during the season. Champions show up to be fast during the race, not during practice. Number 6. New Style of Riding A lot of MotoGP champions introduced a new style of riding which set them apart from the rest. Kenny Roberts popularized the knee down riding style, dragging his knee against the ground to get a sense of how deep his lean angle was. Agostini used a like riding on rails style that fit the motorcycle and tire technology of the time perfectly, maximizing momentum and corner speed. In the early 2000s, Rossi brought out a combination of late braking and smooth riding that set him apart from the competition. Later he popularized the leg dangle style, still used by almost all riders to this day. Stoner took drifting the rear wheel to another level, being able to readjust his line and point the bike towards the exit late in the corners. Jeff Duke believed that the best riding style was to be with the bike and stay on top of it. At the time of his reign, this fit the motorcycle technology perfectly, allowing him to tuck in and get as high top speed as possible. Marc Marquez took body positioning and sliding the front wheel to another level, with his aggressive yet magically smooth riding style. Wayne Rainey showed everyone how an incredibly smooth, calculating riding style was the winning formula for the very violent and hard to control two-stroke machines of the time. Number 5. Will of Steel In 92, Mick Dewan had a horrific crash at practice before the Dutch TT, badly injuring his right leg. At one point during his recovery, the doctors considered amputating his leg, but ultimately Dohan was able to recover well enough to still ride. He was however unable to use his right foot for braking, so he switched to a left thumb operated rear brake. Not only did Duan recover from this horrific crash, in 94 he won his first MotoGP championship, and moved on to win 4 more times. Barry Sheen crashed badly in the 1975 Daytona at 170 mph. He broke his left thigh, right arm, had compression fractures in his back and got a bad road rash. He returned after only 49 days of physical rehab and started winning races immediately. In 2013, Jorge Lorenzo broke his collarbone during the Thursday practice for the Dutch TT. He caught a flight to Barcelona where he had surgery to patch it up, and lined up for the Saturday race, finishing in 5th place. As we saw with Marc Marquez this season, crazy fast comebacks do not always work. What we can see, however, is that MotoGP champions clearly have a will of steel. Number 4. Never Stop Evolving If you have a look at Marc Marquez's riding style in 2013 and compare it to 2019, it's like we are looking at two different riders. The 2013 Marquez is very aggressive and brave, but sometimes he is completely out of control, not pacing himself and waiting for the right moments to pass. The 2019 Marquez is still aggressive but also smooth. He is able to wait his opponents out, pouncing at the right moments to grab first place. Have a look at Mick Dohan's insanely crossed up body position in 91. I don't think there are any better pictures that can be used to describe a crossed up body position. I mean, seriously. Have a look at his body position in 97. In some corners he still rode crossed up, but he also utilized his upper body much more, pushing it into some of the corners. Or Valentino Rossi's transformation from the early 2000s until today, pushing his upper body and elbow further and further into the corners. Number 3. Dirt Bike Riders If you have read any biographies of MotoGP champions, you have probably found that a lot of them either started out riding dirt bikes, or they used dirt bikes to practice technique. 
Stoner started out in dirt track, winning several championships in Australia at a very young age. Nicky Hayden started out in dirt track too, winning many local and national races. I could go on, but I think you're getting it. It helps riders learn how to read the bike and how much grip is available at a given moment. Number 2. Great Tacticians All the champions are fast when it matters, but they also know how to hold back and pounce at the right moment. Have a look at all the times Mark Marquez have waited around in second place and pounced just at the right moment. You can see Rossi doing the same thing. And let's not forget that Laguna Seca race in 2008, when Rossi was slightly slower than Stoner, but kept on passing Stoner at just the right moments to wear him down and not allow him to pass and get away. Stoner got so frustrated that he ultimately made a mistake and crashed, which allowed Rossi to cruise over the finish line. Number 1. Golden Ass If there's one thing that sets apart MotoGP champions from the rest is that they can read the bike and clearly communicate how they want it to behave to race engineers. We have to remember that MotoGP really is a team sport. The racers have to be able to work with engineers and enable them to tune the bike correctly. A great example of this is when Rossi switched from Honda to Yamaha in 2004. Everyone from Rossi's worst critics to his greatest fans thought that his move would be devastating to his career, as the M1 Yamaha had not been performing well at all. During the move from Honda, Rossi convinced chief mechanic Jeremy Burgess along with the majority of his long-established crew to join him at Yamaha. The Yamaha had great brakes and quick turn-in, but the power delivery was horrible. Under the project leader Kochi Tsuji, the engineers developed a so-called long bang engine, where the power pulses are grouped unevenly across the cycle. This led to improved torque characteristics, which helped Rossi control the power at the exit of corners, staying on the absolute limit of tire adhesion to the tarmac. All of Rossi's critics were proven wrong when he won the first race of the 04 season, and ultimately the entire championship. Remember to subscribe to my channel, there's always something new to learn. It's gotta be against the law to look this